Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Tracy and today I'm going to be scrapbooking a page which I created using my Hip Kit Club kit from the month of September and I also used a cut file from the Hip Kit Club but it was from several months ago. It's actually from the February kit and it's called the Geo Heart. So I'm starting off with my silhouette mat here and uh, I I'm going and I, I just thought I would include this footage here just in case you uh, don't have a cameo of your own and want to see how it works I'm just going to include a tiny amount of footage here I think I'm going to try to remember to turn up the volume so that you can uh, hear the joy of having a cameo and the noise that it makes uh, I'm going to also give you a tip here to not do what I did. So I used the kit, the paper that came in the cardstock kit this month. It included two pieces of basil marshmallow paper and I'm drinking coffee because it's 5 a.m. It's necessary at that time of day. Uh, and that cardstock, I did not realize, but that cardstock is extra thick cardstock. It's designed for using with, um, with heavier mixed media and, and that sort of thing. And so, uh, it really did not cut very well because it's just too thick. I'm sure you can cut it with your Cameo if you just used a thicker blade setting, but um, I didn't realize that it was special paper. I just thought it was regular cardstock, so I didn't do that, and it didn't come out right. I'm Here I'm trying to salvage it, but it is uh, really not looking so good. So I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of American Crafts cardstock because that's what I usually use. Look at the difference in the colors of white there. So the American Crafts white cardstock has quite a cool bluish purpley tinge to it. You can't really tell unless if it's beside a white that doesn't have that cool cool tone to it. The cut file, by the way, is from the Hip Kit Club from February of 2017. It's called GeoHeart. And if you subscribe to the Hip Kit Club, you get a cut file every single month. And so I've been getting their kits for quite some time. So I have quite a few, I have access to quite a few cut files. So I just went back and browsed and found one that I thought would go with the with the page that I wanted to make. And I am obsessed with these geo shapes these days. I did a manually die cut geo flower on a page just the other day and I loved it so much I just wanted more geo shapes so I really like this um, uh, you can use that negative shape as well like you could easily piece that together and uh, use the negative space too but I'm not going to and I'm just gonna leave it on the on the mat and take it apart later because I just want to get scrappy at this point I'm going to back this file with some pattern paper and I was going to look through all of the paper but I very quickly saw this one with the squares and the patterns on it are shrunk down to a smaller scale which makes them perfect for backing a cut file because you can see more of each of the patterns that you're going to put on the on the back side. And uh, so I, before even looking through the rest of the papers, I just decided to go ahead and cut this up into pieces and I will use these little tiny patterns for backing on my Geo Heart. So I'm picking a variety. I want a couple of, flow of floral patterns because I, I think that they're really beautiful, but I also want to have a few neutrals and I'm trying to make sure that I have an assortment of ones that read as solids because that will give make it look a little bit less busy and provide some some visual relief but uh, I definitely want to use lots of these really pretty florals that come in this collection. All of the papers that I'm using, uh, except for the piece of American Crafts cardstock that I used for the heart itself, uh, are all came in the kit. And actually white cardstock did come in the kit, like white plain cardstock that wasn't that basil uh, marshmallow, the thicker stuff, did come in the kit. I just forgot about it. And so I went into my stash to use that American Crafts cardstock, but I could have used the cards, the other cardstock that came in the kit because we actually got four white pieces. Now I'm just showing you different options for these Zig 2A glue pens. They come with a lot of different tips. This is the ballpoint tip which is the tiniest of them all and then there's a chisel tip and there's even this really fat wide tip which I use for re-sticking my cameo mats. I just apply it a thin layer like that, not with paper on it though. Uh, I clean off my mat first and then I just let it set up overnight and it becomes like a non-stick tacky surface and it's a good way to prolong the length the, the life of your cameo mats. 
So uh, I'm using the middle sized uh, glue pen there, the two way glue pen that has like a bullet point tip of it, I guess you might call that. And yeah, I'm going to show you this whole process. I think if it gets too, too boring, I will cut it out. But uh, I like to leave my full process in. What I'm doing here is I'm drawing a line and there I drew the line on the pattern that I'm using instead of on the backside. I try to remember to always draw the line on the back side. So I'm just using that zig two way glue pen with the bullet point there to apply a generous amount of adhesive. If you you don't want it to to you want to work fast with the glue because if you use too much of the sorry if you don't use enough of the glue and if it becomes tacky before before you put your uh, pattern paper on it then it, it turns into temporary glue what what the word two-way means is that it is if you use it while it's still liquidy it's a permanent glue but if you allow it to dry and get tacky like I said I do with my cameo mat then it becomes a temporary adhesive and it doesn't stick quite as as well as permanently as if you you do when it's still liquidy so I try to work fast once I put the glue on and then you can see my process there. I'm basically, I'm not trying to not put two similar things together. So the busy floral patterns, I'm trying to put a solid or one of the patterns that reads as a solid in between them so that I don't have two busy florals right beside one another. And then in order, in order to cut these shapes, I'm just lining up the right angles with the right angle, like the right angle of the square with the right angle of the triangles that I'm trying to uh, line there. And then I'm flipping the paper over on the back side, making the line with my pencil. And then I'm cutting a little bit on the outside of that line to make the triangle just a little bit bigger. And that's because I need it. If it was too small, it wouldn't catch on the edge of the die cut and I would have no surface upon which to glue it. Yeah, I think I said that right. So one thing about this particular geo heart, er, yeah, geo heart, is that uh, all of these squares are actually exactly the same size. So what I could be doing here is after I cut one, I could easily just use that one as a template and cut a whole bunch of them at once. And that would be a much easier way to do it than how I'm doing it. And but I only clue into that at the very, very end, maybe my last two or three are the only ones that I do with that easier process. But I kind of, you know, some you might think that this process is pretty tedious, but I kind of enjoy it because you just kind of get into the zone and you go into automatic pilot and the heart looks prettier and prettier the more you fill it in. And it's just this wonderful process. If you just enjoy it and just go with it instead of thinking, oh, this is taking so long, just kind of go with it. And, and it actually doesn't take all that long and it's quite an enjoyable process. So after I get quite a few more on, then you'll get to see what I mean by using one of the triangles as a template to cut the other ones. I mean, you can basically get two triangles out of each square. It's just that the squares are a little bit too big to just basically cut them in half. Also, the more of these triangles you get filled in, the less perfect each triangle has to be because you can, if you cut it a little bit too big, you can overlap it against the side that's already uh, already has paper there because it's it's behind that paper so you won't see it from the front if you cut them a little bit too big once you get going your first couple need to be pretty pretty close to the right size and I'm just being mindful that I am spreading all of these patterns around so that you know basically I'm, I'm kind of trying to make sure I have a, a line down the center of the heart and I'm trying to make sure that I I put each pattern on each side of that heart. So what I'm trying to say is that if I put one pattern on the left side of the heart, then I save the second half of that pattern <laughs> for the other side, for the right side. And so I'm, I'm adding a couple of other patterns as I go because I'm realizing that I actually needed to use more than what I had picked out because there were just more triangles than I realized. And uh, again, trying to spread out the, the ones that read as solids or the ones that just have one color, 
I'm spreading those amongst the ones that are more patterns. And I'm also, there are a couple of patterns there that have real white, like a lot of, of white space on them, like the paper airplane pattern, for example, has a lot of white space on it. And then there's another one I'm going to use towards the end that also has a lot of white space. And I'm just going to try to keep those apart from one another as well. So as you can see, this really does look better and better as time goes. And I just don't want to, I'm, I'm pulling up a couple of the corners because those corners, some of them have four or five layers of paper on them. And so I don't want them to stand to, to make this heart be too bulky. I want the heart to lie flat at this point, although I'm not going to end up wanting it to lie flat. But at this point, I want to have the option of lying it flat at least. And again, working fast with that glue is really important so that it stays, so that it really holds these pattern papers in place. I find that that's one of the trickiest things about using these kinds of die cuts and piece working the back side of it is that if your glue starts to let go, it gets really, uh, I forgot to cut that one before I glued it. So I just glued it. I just cut it after the fact there. Uh, if you don't use enough glue or if your glue starts to let go, then everything starts kind of falling apart as you handle it. And you really do have to handle it quite a lot in order to get this done. And so using a good, a good glue and using enough of it to keep the pieces stuck together really does help with this. This is not a time to skimp on your glue. It's there to use, so don't save it. Use it for this project. <laughs> use it all up. So there you can see those last couple of patterns coming into place. There we go, trimming off a couple more of those corners. That's just again to, to help it to lie flat. And now I have two spaces left and I'm just trying to decide what square will I use for that. And I think I'm gonna go with this pink one, yep. So here's where I realized, wait a minute, I can cut both things at the same time. I should have been doing that for the whole thing. But I did really enjoy the process, so I don't regret that too much. Sometimes there, there are these die cut shapes have really variable shapes inside of them, and you do have to shape each one individually. So I really should have taken advantage of the fact that this one had, had uniform shapes inside of it but you know you live and you learn so I'm just cutting out you saw me just trace a template and I'm cutting this out a little bit smaller than the heart itself because I just wanted to back this because I don't know how long this is going to be sitting around my scrap room I didn't know how much time I'd have to craft and I just wanted it to be solid and so that just holds everything in together if any of that glue starts to come loose or whatever it, it's not going to be an issue because uh, it's all held in with that piece of scrap paper on the back your glue your fingers get really sticky working with that kind of of glue that is te in some ways temporary and and, and than permanent if you use it wet. So I just had to make sure that I really cleaned my fingers off because that tacky glue, if you get residue on anything, then the residue starts to pick up lint and grease off your hands and stuff like that. And it tends to leave black marks on your project. So make sure that you get all of the residue, gluey residue off your hands before you move forward on this project. So now I pulled out my Genome New Home sewing machine and I am just sewing all the way around the outside edge of this. The outside edge of this shape has a wider border or a wider strip than some of the edges on the inside. So it's much more sewable than the inside edges. Some of the inside lines are so thin, I would have had a really hard time staying on them. So I just glued, I just sewed around the outside edge. There are a few thicker edges like that, that kind of diamond shape in the middle also has thicker edges. I could have sewn on that as well, but I just chose not to. So I'm done with my machine now, so I will put it away. And here's my heart. And that's going to be basically the focal point of this page. And when I have such an intricate and detailed and uh, kind of high time investment type of item on my page, I do like that to become the focal point and to, you know, keep my, pay my other embellishing to a minimum. So that's going to be my main embellishment. I chose this really light pink piece of basil cardstock that came in the cardstock kit. 
from Hip Kit Club again. And then I printed up this photo. It was a color photo, but it was all oranges and browns. It was it was uh, taken at Eastside Mario's. And so um, it was really orangey and wouldn't go with any of these papers. And I really wanted to scrapbook this, pa this photo. So I just changed it to black and white. I think it looks cute in black and white. And I don't do a whole lot of black and white photos, so I like to throw them in every once in a while. Sometimes I go through phases where I use them more. I tend to make a lot of... I thought for a second there about about matting the whole shape in another piece of the gray cardstock. That gray cardstock also came in the kit, in the cardstock kit. Um, but I decided not to because I really like how it looks in white. I want this page to have a real soft look and I, I want there to be lots of whites. Now I am just making a rough outline of the shape of this and I kind of regret doing this because in the end I'm going to move my embellishment over and you're going to see some of these lines which I can't erase once I put lots of mixed media on top. So I have the color kit here. This is an, an extra add-on kit that you can get from the Hip Kit Club and I love getting the color kit. Uh, I really love playing with mists and different colors and getting the color kit really I find that it kind of exposes me to lots of different products that I wouldn't have necessarily bought or had a chance to you know figure out which colors I want and that sort of thing it's already coordinated uh, with the kit so I don't have to to figure out which colors go with what and what it's going to look like on my project someone else has already done that for me so that's another thing that I love about kit clubs so you saw I started by using the smooshing technique there and I keep checking to see how this is looking compared to my my uh, embellishment and photo and then I decided to just go ahead and, and mist. I rarely mist right onto my page but I think in this case I, I just want it to look nice and dark behind the the heart and I want it to kind of get gradually lighter so that's a perfect opportunity to mist and you'll notice what I did was I misted towards the center like I held the mist around the center of where my shape is and then I I misted outwards and turned my paper so that the mist was kind of spreading out towards like away from the center of the shape where my where my shape will be now I have this really strong bristled inexpensive brush paintbrush from Michaels and I'm using it like a toothbrush so I'm flicking the ink onto the page and what that does is it gives me really fine splatter <clears throat> in tiny little drops and the drops of splatter just add lots of impact to the otherwise the mist would have been very subtle and I wanted it to look really messy and get beautiful texture from those pools and you'll notice oh sorry my camera hates that palette I'm sorry about that uh, so you'll notice that I sopped up the ink in the center of the shape B basically I did that because you're not going to see it it's going to be covered by that heart shape and uh, I didn't want it to compromise the quality of the paper I didn't put any gesso or anything on this is just plain cardstock and it would not handle that much liquid so rather than waiting for that it would also make it take a long time to dry so rather than doing that, I just sopped it up with paper towel. So I'm really liking how this looks, but I'm going to add some white as well. And I'm just using the nozzle, but this white is almost gone. So I think I'm going to switch to my paintbrush if I remember correctly. I can't remember. Maybe I just used the nozzle for that. Yeah, I just used the nozzle. And that is opaque white from Mr. Huey's. That was from my stash. It didn't come in the in the color kit. But the pink spritz that I used, by the way, is from Shimmers, and it's called Ruby is the color, and the product is called Spritz, and it's like a mist that has a glimmery look to it. It's really pretty. It says Spritz is an iridescent. Uh, water-based spray medium used to add color and shimmer to your art your craft projects so there I am just adding a little bit more to the edge here because I wanted to have a secondary cluster down on the bottom here and as I'm misting I'm sort of creating a base upon which my elements on the page will kind of hang And again, I'm really sorry about the camera being so weird. It just doesn't like the white of that uh, of that 
Tri Art palette that I use so much. So I'm adding some white over here as well. And uh, what I want the um, oh, and I have to add some more splot, some more sp like sprinkles and splats of the ruby spritz. And so I need to let that dry. And that Mr. Huey's opaque white ink really takes a very, very long time to dry. So I am going to have to leave that for quite some time before it's going to be ready. So in the meantime, I will type up, not type, but I will print out my title. The title of this one is going to be Girls Night Out. And I'm putting big spaces between my words here because I plan to cut it up and stack them. And the scissors setting on this machine just doesn't work very well so I'm just going to cut it off with scissors and I'm also in love with my Dymo label maker again this one is by Motex I got it on Etsy quite a number of years ago I don't know if you can still get them it's made in Korea I think and uh, it's really great I love the different fonts you can get different discs and put it on and they've got like just cool modern looking fonts I really like it now this needs some black, but not, I didn't want it to be pitch black. So I took my Mr. Huey's silver and I, again, I'm going to use that same tooth, not toothbrush, but it's like a hard bristled brush and spritz some more. I feel like I'm channeling my inner Missy Whitten or um, Melanie in our Facebook group. I can never pronounce her last name. She's French and I can't pronounce her last name, but Melanie does this a lot too, with just kind of like a super messy misted background. I was very inspired by both of those artists for this page. There we go, trimming up that title. And a lot of time has gone by because I needed to let that dry. And really the opaque white sometimes doesn't dry at all. And so, yeah, I'm just, uh, it's still leaving white on my fingers as I move it. Away. It's about as dry as it's gonna get. So I'm just gonna go with it. Now here, I'm actually, I want this to look like it's hanging off the edge of the page, which means that it's not exactly where I outlined. And you can actually see the pencil mark of where I did outline. But I'm just going to ignore that because if I tried to take my eraser to it at this point, it would not be a pretty scene because I would lift off some or mix or mess up some of the splatters and color that's on the background. So I'm just going to leave it and hope that you just can't see it. It's a faint gray line and towards the end you'll probably see it when I show the close-ups and I'll tell you uh, I do have another little trick that I'm going to add to this page that I probably wouldn't have added except that it um except that it, it has that gray line on the background that I wanted to kind of mask or distract you from a little bit. So here I don't think I recorded this on my other camera but I'm just doing a zigzag line across the edge of this to make it look like this heart was basically stitched onto the page and I'm using my Kenmore half size sewing machine for this. They're the same, pretty much the same sewing machine, um, an older brand, like the white one is older than the pink one. I keep the white one with black thread in the bobbin and I keep the pink one with white thread in the bobbin. You can change the bobbins, <laughs> but uh, I thought my white one was broken when I bought the pink one, but then I realized I just had the bobbin threaded wrong. What a silly rookie mistake I made like it was months and probably years of having the bobbin threaded wrong and I kept re-threading the bobbin to like putting new bobbins in and just making the same mistake every single time and it's a silly mistake because I actually know how to thread a bobbin I just wasn't doing it <laughs> So here's how that looks. I'm really pleased with it. I thought about putting the title over here by the photo, but my original idea was to stack it and put it down on the bottom. I wanted the heart to look kind of like it's hanging off the edge of the page and then the photo is hanging off of it, almost like one of those hanging signs. I don't know if you know, like, yeah, kind of like that sign on the, st on the sticker there, the chipboard sticker, but 
Yeah, but without the signpost. <laughs> like the signpost is off the page. It's over to the to the right. That's my idea that I had anyways. And so that, uh, by the way, your pretty great chipboard sticker. That's from Turn the Page from Paige Evans. And it came in the kit. All of the things. I think everything on this page is from the kit except the uh, white and silver mists that I used. And I just want a cluster of embellishments over to the right of the photo, but they need to be pretty big so that they can compete with that, with the details of the heart. And so I'm going to choose fairly large embellishments for over there. I'm thinking about putting some journaling down in this corner here. So I grabbed that green tag that I might put some journaling on. But I also want the title down there, so I'm not sure that it's going to fit. So I'm just going to ignore that corner for a few minutes and work on this cluster up here. So I, that heart, that butterfly is pretty large, and I think it works well with that cluster. The cluster is basically going to be three large things, and then I'll add some more little things afterwards. But this cute little journaling card here has some a whole bunch of holes that have to be punched out of it. And I want to have it not be blank, so I'm going to put a puffy sticker on it. That one looks good, actually, but I'm going to change my mind and put a different one on there. That one actually looked fine. I didn't have to switch them, but I went with this one instead. It just felt like it filled more of the journaling card, but in retrospect, they both look fine. I think I just like this one and I wanted to use it. Might be part of it. And now I'm going to make this butterfly's wings have some dimension by putting double foam adhesive on the tops of the wings and then single foam adhesive on the bottoms of the wings. And then I am going to stick those down. I don't always stick them down. Sometimes I just let them flap, but in this case, I'm sticking them down. And I'm going to cut a little flag fishtail to this little tag to make it look more like a banner than a tag. And I'm thinking about what else I want to put down here. Now I don't want to put so much down here that it covers up the mixed media that I kind of purposely put down there. So I don't want it to be completely hidden. I thought I could stack the title like this and then have a tiny bit of journaling underneath. This is I zoomed out so that you could see the overall balance of that. And then I ended up deciding to put the title underneath because I like black things to typically be below lighter colored things. Just it kind of gives it a bit of an anchoring effect in terms of having something dark and heavy lower on your page as opposed to higher on your page. I'm tearing off the backing from those from those uh, Dymo label, well, it's actually Motex label uh, stickers. And then I'm also stapling them in place because they tend to pop off. I find the Dymo brand does that too. It's like they're they're just they've been curved so long the tape comes on a roll and it just wants to go back into a curvy shape. Unless if you use a really, really long one, then sometimes you can get them to sit flat. Or and you can also put extra adhesive underneath, like a nice Tombow Mono Multi would work well there. I am stamping the date in black, and I just off-stamped it a couple of times as well. I'm going to staple that in place too, and then trim off the edge of that sticker, or die-cut piece I mean. And I like how that looks at the bottom. And now I want to do my journaling and I have quite a bit to say about this. So I'm just thinking about where can I put the journaling. I thought about journaling in the little corner kind of along the bottom edge of the photo and nestled into the corner of the heart. But I decided to journal around the outside edge. I used to do this all the time when I started scrapbooking, but I haven't done it recently. So I thought I'd do it again. Uh, since Sophie was away at Girl Guide Camp and Scott was working, Liv and I had a girls' night. Uh, we started at Eastside Mario's for supper, then went shopping at Roots and Winners. There weren't many good movies playing, but we decided upon Stronger, a movie about a man who lost his legs in the Boston Marathon bombing. It was the first adult movie we attended together. And so, yeah, I mean... 
you know, I'm used to going to see kids' movies with, with my daughter, but she's at that age now where she's starting to watch more adult things. And so, yeah, it was... I, I think it was a good movie. She really enjoyed the movie, so I think it was a good a good choice for us for that night. There's a lot of horror movies showing right now because it's almost Halloween. And so I just have that bag down so that my sleeve, because I mentioned that the white opaque mist doesn't dry all that well, and I didn't want my sleeve to drag in it and mess it up. So yeah, it was a really wonderfully made movie too. Like it was, it was well done and it really did pull her. I was worried that she'd be bored. I'm not too worried about her. Like there's a lot of swearing in it. So it's not like if you don't like that kind of thing, then that's not great for you to, you know, expose your kids to. But I mean, we have a lot of talk in our family about language and how people use lang use the F word in like songs and shows and stuff and, and why they use it and, and that sort of thing. And also that, you know, it's kind of part of culture around here, especially in the Maritimes. There's like kind of pockets of people who are known for swearing a lot, <laughs> um, just kind of like part of their culture of the province that they live in or whatever. I think people swear a lot everywhere, but <laughs> um we don't swear a lot in our family, so the, our kids are, they needed a lot of kind of coaching around that, like the idea that someone could use bad words but not be bad. Um, so, so yeah, here's the close-ups of this one, and I'm not quite done yet. I added uh, this little butterfly down here just because I wanted something pink, and I also wanted a puffy sticker down here. I'm going to show you how that journaling looks around the outside edge of the page. And I added some bundles of thread here, again, kind of a, a bit of a, of a shout out to Missy Whitten, but also, and the main reason I added it was because there was that gray line where uh, in pencil where the heart was supposed to be. And so the, the thread there, you really, it's right there, but you can't see it very well because the thread really does distract you from seeing it. And so I think it did a pretty reasonable job of, of uh, camouflaging that that little pencil line you can see it if you look closely enough but it's pretty even even though I know where, where to look for it I still can't see it very very much so blah sorry I'm bumbling around having a difficult time explaining so I wanted I just felt like it needed a little more so I thought that these that these bows would look nice I love bows I was gonna do two different colors and then I didn't like that so I made them both be pink it's and here we go. I'm going to add even more. So I thought I was done. And then I thought, oh, I think I need something else. So it just felt like the cluster beside the photo was just, it didn't have anything to say, boom, here I am. Look at these clusters. <laughs> so I thought that these glitter foam thickers did a wonderful job of saying, boom, here I am. <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly what they say, but they do draw your attention <laughs> over to those embellishments for sure. I just have to play around a little bit and I wanted to, to repeat one down in the little secondary cluster as well, but uh, I had to play around a little bit to get them what I wanted. Like at first I thought I would use one of the outlines and then two of the solid ones. And then I decided to make all of the ones on the heart be the outline ones. They're really the nicest ones. And so I wanted to use them on this page and they just create a little visual triangle around my cluster of embellishments there I'm fussing with this way too much it really doesn't matter it can go anywhere over there <laughs> and then one down at the bottom just to have that repetition so here we go the close-ups again now that it's finally done there are some photos at the end as well this page was a lot of fun to create. It was really fun to use the color add-on from the Hip Kit Club and fun to play with mixed media. Misting these mists is really probably one of the most basic ways to use them and easiest ways to use them. And they really do look beautiful to just, you know, spray the mist and then add some droplets to, to intensify the color in certain places and use that as a way to provide an anchor on your background for where your layers are going to go. I think that's a really nice basic way to introduce mixed media to your pages without having to master a whole lot of complicated techniques. As you saw me do it, it was just kind of 
having a sense of where I wanted my cluster to go and then just having the mist kind of go out from there. And I love the texture that it gives to the page, you know, because the, the droplets do kind of add a bit of shininess where they're really thickly coated and yeah, it looks nice and casual as well. Thank you for letting me be a small part of your scrappy day. If you like this video, I'd love to hear from you. Please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I post new content each week to inspire you and get you scrappy. So check out my other videos and have a really great scrappy week.